All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to ProSoft Technologies IIoT webinar. I'm uh, Julianne, and I'm in marketing, and I want to thank you all for joining me today. Uh, with me is Vishal Prakash. He's a product manager for our IIoT platform. Uh, before I hand it off to Vishal, I just wanted to uh, let you guys know, feel free to ask any questions that you need to um, at the bottom of your screen, and then we'll get to the Q&A at the end of this webinar. So uh, to begin, I guess I'll hand it off to Vishal. Welcome, Vishal. Thank you, Julianne. Uh, thank you all for attending this webinar. I hope all of you are uh, safe uh, during this current crisis, uh, both you and your families. Okay, um, so let's get started. Let's make sure my screen is active. There you go. Okay, um, so today's webinar, as uh, Juliette said, is focusing on IIoT and the benefits of IIoT and how ProSoft can help you um, in your IIoT journey as well. Um, so the aim today is really is to understand uh, some of the benefits like uh, realizing real-time data exchange and making informed real-time business decisions uh, while at the same time also looking at how predictive maintenance uh, can help uh, with a more connected enterprise. Okay, so the agenda for today, we're going to look at uh, very briefly on who ProSoft is for those of you who do not know us. We're then going to start with the basics of IIoT, uh, including the definition, uh, a comparison of SCADA and DCS versus IIoT and how uh, IIoT works at a very high level. We will then look at the benefits that we just spoke about. Um, and then finally, how ProSoft can help you with your IIoT project. There should be plenty of time for Q&A at the bottom. So as Julianne said, please send in your questions and we will get to them at the very end of this webinar. Okay, so who is ProSoft? Um, we are generally known as the Modbus guys. Uh, in the industry, we've been in business for over 30 years. Uh, we've got well over 100 employees with our headquarters in Bakersfield, California, um, with regional offices uh, located strategically around the globe. Um, around 2014, we became part of Belden. Um, and Belden itself um, is a global uh, IT slash uh, cable company. We started off, ProSoft started off by creating the Modbus interface module for the Rockwell PLCs. Uh, and that's really what we're known for uh, very well. But today we are much more than just protocol conversion. Uh, we're also very well known for our free lifetime product support as well. All right, let's start with the basics now. So what does IIoT stand for? IIoT stands for Industrial Internet of Things. Um, it was originally uh, coined by GE, as in the term IIoT was coined by GE. Um, so what does it mean? Um, IIoT typically refers to the process of the integration and data analysis of complex processes and systems whereby using this information to better the process and system in near real time. Some estimates put at the number of connected devices on this IIoT platform at around 50 billion and is set to become the next trillion dollar industry. Um, for those of us who are already in automation, um, I think you would recognize and realize that IIoT is really an evolution from what most of us know uh, or known previously as SCADA and DCS, which continues to exist by the way. Um, and you're going to see why in a couple of sides, why I've called uh, IIoT an evolution. Okay, so at a very high level, uh, this shows how IIT works. Um, it's fundamentally a push subscribe model. So basically data is pushed from uh, the field, which is known as clients, uh, to something to an intermediate uh, service, which is typically called a broker, and then users would go and subscribe to this data. Um, clients are field devices like sensors and protocol gateways and 
programmable automation controllers like PLCs and RTUs. Um, typically, you would have like a protocol gateway that would get all of the data from the field devices and then translate that into an II, IIoT protocol uh, like MQTT, OPC UA, and then push this data out to a broker. Now the broker can be an on-premise device, so like a server, or it can be a cloud-based system. Um, there are a number of open source brokers, typically cloud-based, an example is Mosquito. Um, and the broker's function is obviously to receive the data from the client, filter that data and then store it, or push it either to the subscriber, or if you've got data coming back from the subscriber, back to the client. So it's two-way communications. And then finally, there are the users of this data who are called subscribers, and they can consume this data um, you know, pretty much on any platforms and mobile devices. Uh, it could be raw data. They could consume it visually through the use of dashboards and so forth. So this is how IIoT works um, at a very high level. Um, so before we talk about, you know, why as in why IIoT is so popular and why it has moved from being a buzzword um, just not that long ago, we really need to understand that difference between SCADA and IIoT that I just mentioned. Okay, um, so what is the difference? SCADA um, or supervisory control and data acquisition its primary role is really about machine control or process automation, and that's achieved by getting the required data from various field instruments, such as sensors and valves and transmitters, typically via a programmable automation controller like an RTU or a PLC. So the smarts is in the PLC or the RTU, and you've got all of these field instruments that's providing this data which then, uh, which you then use to automate the process and also get an understanding of how things are operating in the field. IIoT, on the other hand, um, its primary role is actually using the information that's generated by a SCADA system, and then on top of that, direct data gathering, gathering from certain field devices, and then analyzing that information in near real time to improve process efficiency quality, safety, and innovation. And it is because of this reliance, the way the first step is it's relying on that process data from SCADA, uh, is why I say that uh, IIoT is more of an evolution, um, obviously with some very distinct advantages. Okay, so let's look at uh, why. IIoT, as in why has this become so popular? And like I said, it, you know, it was not that long ago that it was more a buzzword, uh, but it really has turned into something where businesses can now really get verifiable and tangible business uh, outputs, positive outputs uh, in implementing IIoT within their plant or process. So to really understand, we probably need to go back at about 20 years, um, you know, the start of this century, there was this incredible change, this quantum uh, change in computational power and technology that led to the explosion uh, and the emergence of cloud-based platforms. Um, and again, that was just a start because the physical devices such as the PLCs and RTUs and PCs and sensors, they already existed. But over a period of time, these devices also became powerful and they were able to provide a lot more data than what they did. Um, so for example, the sensor would provide just rather than its status, provided significantly more information about its health, uh, diagnostic information. Um, and so, you know, even though as computers were starting to get powerful, it was still not enough to analyze all of this information coming about from these field devices and the processes because there was simply so much. And that's what led to this emergence of uh, cloud-based computing. Um, so cloud computing is basically the ability to use a network of servers that are connected via the internet to manage, store, and analyze that information. Um, the challenge was, though, that 
you know, you had this emergence in cloud computing technology, you had all of these power and the data coming in, which when systems were connected, it was easy to get this data to the cloud and you can start processing it. The problem was the systems, remember, were already in place, so kind of there was a limitation on how much data was being sent and the source was the same. And for this to truly be effective, you really needed additional data directly either from the field instruments or you needed a way to get this data out to the cloud. So for IIoT to be truly effective and for it to, to take that change where it changed from just being a buzzword to reality, um, it's really what happened next in that process and that emergence of cloud computing technologies and the power of sensors uh, that really led to IIoT becoming a reality. And that was the connectivity. The cost of connecting devices to the internet has dropped significantly. It continues to drop. Uh, I mean, I was listening to a TED talk not that long ago where they were saying that the second most abundant thing available on earth today, other than the air we breathe, is actually cellular coverage. And if you look at that map, you'll understand why. That's actually a map of 40, uh, 40 LTE coverage transferring through to 5G. Um, and a large part of that world is, is heading that way. So that reliability of that connectivity continues to increase exponentially. And what all of this, this connectivity and this explosion in cloud technologies and the power, what all of this done is this ability to connect more devices directly um, to cloud services and then getting all of this data which can now be used for analysis and uh, historization. So it was this combination that's really been, and, and this connectivity has just improved significantly over the last several years, I would say eight to 10 years. And that's what's really led to this emergence and, and this thing of IIoT becoming a reality rather than simply existing um, on paper. Okay. So next, we're going to look at the benefits of IIoT, um, as in, um, you know, today, what are some of the benefits? And what better way to look at the benefits than to look at, let's say, some applications? Um, so the first application we're going to look at is actually a well pad. Um, so for those of you who don't know, uh, a well pad is obviously, it's a term used in oil and gas industry. Uh, it's a it's an area, a geographical area where there are drilled wells, and you can have up to ten wells in a single location for either oil or gas. Uh, the product from these wells is then collected into what's called a storage tanks, and then from there they're dispersed through to the refinery for processing. So in this case, if you look at a well pad, um, OT or operational technology, they want to make sure that the well pad is working correctly and safely. Um, and to achieve that, they're gonna have some local automation, potentially local SCADA or a HMI that will show them the current state of all of the variables in the process itself. Um, and then typically a company is gonna have lots of these well pads. You know, an oil and gas company is just not gonna operate one well pad, they're gonna have several of these. So then there is some, there will be some kind of central SCADA where data from all of the different well pads are coming in and again, from an OT perspective, this gives them that overview of what's happening at all of their sites. Uh, because remember, OT's primary objective is to keep the wells producing. That's their key KPI, because right? that's what makes the dollars. At that point, typically, if you've got a SCADA system, what you would do is you would generate all of the reports uh, from all of this incoming data, and then you would dispose those reports to different parts of the organization, you know, whether it's the maintenance department, whether it's to senior management, whether it's to finances. Uh, you know, you would be sending the, the reports either daily or as required uh, to all of these different departments. But here's the key in what I just said. It's this reliance of the rest of the organization on the OT department to get all of this data. And, uh, and again, it's been working and they can go and get the data, but they're still reliant on OT, either giving them access to the SCADA system, which typically they would don't want to because it controls the process, or they're waiting on OT to give them that data, which could 
which like I said, takes time and effort. The advantage of having IIoT, um, especially if it's a cloud-based platform, is that you break that dependence because with IIoT, you can send the data to a secure platform. Remember when we looked at how IIoT works, you've got sort of the field devices, which are clients, you've got a broker which receives and hosts the data, and then a subscriber that can go and get that data. So in this case, the data can be sent up to a secure platform from which these different departments can subscribe to the data that they want. So for example, finance is not really interested in uh, what, you know, what data might be relevant to the maintenance. So for example, you know, which valve might need replacing, uh, which uh, pump might need servicing. Finance is not, really, not really interested in that information. Uh, they're really interested in saying, you know, how much oil and gas is being produced. Uh, because that allows them to calculate revenue and also forecast revenue um, in near real time as possible, which is obviously very good for that part of the organization. But a far greater value for finance to have access to that real time product information is the ability to make a business trading and investment decisions. Um, and for senior management, that's critical. Um, as we all know, the price of oil fluctuates and there's several different market conditions that determine who your buyer is going to be or how you're going to sell it. So having access to all of that information uh, really makes their lives easier and they can make these informed decisions which will impact the business positively. Let's look at another example. Um, in this one, I'm choosing the water wastewater industry. So I chose this because there's a, the water wastewater market is going through an interesting change. What's happening is that many of the smaller utilities, which are typically municipal operated, um, they're being gobbled up by larger corporations. So essentially towns and cities are outsourcing um, the service to these companies to run. So for most of these facilities, they've already got sort of, you know, some form of localized monitoring and control, um, which means that the corporation that's running these facilities, and again, they can get all of this information from the local offices, but there is this work, this dependency again that we saw in the previous example. IIoT can help break that dependency where they've got access to this data near real time as possible. So with these corporations, when they take on these utilities, they're paid by the service. So as in how well does the service is running, so whether it's water, or let's say if it's wastewater, then how much are they processing um, in terms, and that's how they would get paid by these municipalities. So from a financial side again, uh, and you can see I like money, I like numbers, um, Imagine having access to all of this billable information in near real time rather than having to wait for all of these reports to come in, um, you know, and then you have to collate all of that information. You've got to have systems to read in the reports and then recollate and all of that rather simply to say, here's all of the information. I just need this part of it. I can go and get it. And then the maintenance guy can do the same and then go and get the information that he requires to set up, you know, scheduled maintenance and things like that and so forth. So again, the ability to have that should really impact uh, the business in a very positive sense. Okay, um, another huge benefit of IIoT, uh, predictive maintenance. So maintenance itself has been around forever um, and, and there are different types of maintenance. Um, you've got reactive maintenance, which is after the fact. So after something has broken down or failed, you would go in and you would fix that. Uh, you've got scheduled maintenance, which is more time-based rather than a need-based uh, resolution. Uh, you've got proactive maintenance, which is really, it is a form of predictive maintenance, but without the data to justify it, uh, the change. And then finally, you've got predictive maintenance, which is actually using field data as in real operational data to predict potential issues and then resolve them ahead of time to ensure that uh, the downtime uh, is kept to an absolute minimum, but also the costs as well. Um, certainly a lot lower to fix an issue before than after the failure has occurred. 
So in this case, in, in this scenario, how does IIoT help predictive maintenance? Um, if you remember, just a couple of minutes ago, I said, you know, there were two things that really drove uh, IIoT to become a reality. Um, one was the very powerful field devices, which were a lot smarter today than what they are previously. And then secondly, it was the connectivity. Uh, so previously, without this uh, cellular wireless connectivity, you were limited to the number of instruments you could monitor, you know, because it depended on physical wiring to them and so forth. And then also the limitation of the controller to bring that data in. But today with this low cost and reliable cellular wireless connectivity, you can connect a lot of these instruments directly to your IIoT platform and then bring in the diagnostic data. You may still want to do control through your process controller, which is the PLS at you, but the ability to bring in all that data, you can do that directly. Um, so again, with all of these devices providing that high speed, uh, sorry, this diagnostic information, um, you really need that high speed and reliable connectivity, which in turn gives you this increased bandwidth so you can bring back all of that data. Um, again, you know, I want to go back when we did that comparison to SCADA. You know, it's not to say that SCADA uh, did not provide this ability. They did, but it was limitational. Um, so today, uh, by having access to this data and doing predictive maintenance, the real business benefits are increased asset life, increased uptime, uh, the ability to prioritize uh, valuable technical resources and maintenance people, um, and then also to be more direct and more focused on capital expense spending, and then finally the ability to reduce your maintenance costs. So if you look at all of those benefits, they again impact the business positively. Okay. So we come to how ProSoft can help with your IIoT project. Um, and again, I want to remind you that we are typically called the bond bus guys. We generally a lot more than that. And today our strength is providing connectivity. So getting data from A to B, either wired or wireless, and then translating those industrial protocols, um, including legacy protocols as well. So we support quite a number of legacy protocols, but also the new ones, things like OPC, UA, and MQTT. And you're gonna see that as we go through some of the solutions um, from uh, ProSoft. Now, the first one you're gonna look at, um, this one is specific to the Rockwell platform. So we have what's called as a LDM or a Linux development module. Um, which has got a number of built-in libraries in it. Um, it's a pretty powerful and a pretty smart module. The idea behind this is that it allows users to create their own applications. Um, and that also now includes the built-in sample code for both NQTT and the ThingWorks IIoT platform, where the benefits include direct connectivity to business enterprise systems, obviously with the ThingWorks or with NQTT. Um, but also the ability for you to customize your application, take advantage of the pre-installed libraries, uh, whether it is to access the IO, whether it's to access the backlink communications, accessing the ports, we've got a number of pre-built-in libraries that makes all of this communication simple. So then you just focus on your application to integrate it, and you've got a very specific uh, or a very advanced uh, module capability. Um, and since this is, as I said, uh, this is specific to the Rockwell platform, but since it sits on the uh, chassis, you've got reduced latency, uh, obviously the other advantage being direct access to the backlane uh, data, including protocol data as well. Um, and then you're able to read write directly to tags, and it provides a nice and clean integrated solution for your customer. Uh, this next one uh, is another connectivity solution from ProSoft. This is called Persistent Data Network, or PDN. Uh, this is an always-on, secure, cloud-based infrastructure network to connect remote assets. Um, the network itself is super simple to set up. It literally takes minutes. It is a very OT-friendly and IT-secure solution. 
Um, the connection points itself on your network, it can be wired or wireless. How does PDN help with your IIoT project? It helps by providing a high speed and high bandwidth connection, which allows you to bring back data more frequently uh, from all of your remote sites. And remember, this is very, very secure. So, and Rima have already said that the reliability and the cost of cellular connectivity continues, uh, you know, the cost continues to drop while the reliability continues uh, to increase, which means now you're able to connect to previously non-viable assets or very remote assets on a network um, and bring all of that information back in, which again should help you to improve your productivity, your quality um, of the service that you're providing. Um, another solution is our industrial Wi-Fi radios. These are our ultra-fast roaming and safety certified industrial Wi-Fi radios. Uh, the ultra-fast roaming, um, you know, under 10 milliseconds maintains seamless high-speed connections um, to one or more devices on moving equipment such as AGVs and cranes. Um, and then as they travel between those uh, access points, you don't lose that connectivity. Um, so this is an in-plant wireless solution. Uh, again, the advantage here is now um, you can get hard to reach assets, mobile assets on your platform, which again gives you more data, better insight into your plan process. And this additional data, like I said, should help you with things like predictive maintenance, improving the quality and the service. Um, so this particular solution from ProSoft, this is a data logger module. Um, it helps with predictive maintenance. Uh, if you think predictive maintenance is all about capturing as much data as possible, which can then help you analyze that data and look for potential issues that you can then resolve proactively. Uh, with this module, one of the nice things about this is it can store well over 16 million records on, um, on site. Um, and it does support high-speed logging, so you can log data as quickly as 50 milliseconds from multiple devices using different protocols, where you can then sort of, once you've recorded all of this data, you can then have that uploaded directly through to your platform uh, because this has got integrated REST API support. So you're able to, to bring all of that data and either historize it, you know, use it for analysis, use it for dashboarding, we should give you this nice clear picture of what's happening. And then with all of that data, you can look to see um, how it can uh, um, help you with things like predictive maintenance. Um, another solution to help with predictive maintenance in ProSoft is the HART gateway. Um, this one is very useful um, because one of the advantages of the HAT protocol is the ability to get additional diagnostic information from the field instruments. So not only can you get this diagnostic information to help with predictive maintenance, you can actually remotely do configuration and calibration of these devices, which will increase your efficiency and reduce your support costs. Um, so again, all of these things should help uh, with the broad IIoT benefit of improving uh, process efficiencies um, for your system. Um, this is another connectivity solution, uh, secure remote access from ProSoft. Uh, again, this allows you to remotely connect uh, to your assets um, very, very easily, very securely. Um, and if you combine this with predictive maintenance, where if you've got the data and now you're able to, you know, once you have the data, you can then proactively look to resolve the issues. And many of these plants and processes are remote. So rather than having to drive out, obviously it does depend on the issue, but in most cases, rather than having to drive out, which will increase your cost, you're able to remotely connect and either do a first-hand analysis, so you're better prepared when you go out to site to resolve the issue quickly, or also be able to resolve this issue remotely as well. Um, we've got a number of smart gateways. I'd like to start off with the OPC UA gateway, which gives you direct connectivity uh, between the OT and to business enterprise systems. Um, on, and on the OT or the field side, the module does support multiple protocols, uh, including Ethernet IP and Modbus. 
Um, so you've got two dedicated Ethernet ports, one for the field side and one to interface to your uh, top end business enterprise system. Uh, we also have a Modbus to Profinet device gateway, um, a Ethernet IP to Modbus TCP IP. Uh, again, these uh, gateways fundamentally allow you to connect disparate systems, um, bringing into a automation controller, which can then have sort of a single top end connectivity to your IIoT platform, um, or you can have them directly connected as well. Um, and then we've also got Modbus uh, TCP to Modbus Serial Gateway as well. Um, so this is just a sample. Uh, if you go to the ProSol website, there are other smart gateways uh, that can help you with your protocol uh, translation. And then you can also look at the connectivity solutions as well. Okay. Um, so let me look at the summary before we open up for Q&A. So in summary, um, if you look at the top three benefits or top three reasons on how IIoT can benefit you, uh, they are realizing the real-time data exchange between business units. Um, so remember, if you go back to the examples that I looked at, when you've got an IIoT solution where you can send all of your data, uh, that includes you know, how much product you've been producing, and you know, the, the, the runtime of your machines, uh, how many times you've started and stopped. So all of that information, when you've got that in your real time, then your business units can go and get or subscribe to that required data that they want, which then leads to the second benefit, which is making that real time informed uh, business decision. Uh, so it allows them to make better decisions uh, that obviously will positively impact the business. And then finally, the enhanced predictive maintenance modeling uh, and a more connected enterprise, again, because of that reliable and low cost uh, connectivity option that's available today. Um, if you look at the top three reasons and how ProSoft can help you with your IIoT project. Um, so remember your industrial protocol to IIoT protocol translation, we can help you with that. We've got a number of smart field gateways and then finally, we've got different types of connectivity as well. So if you think the key to IIoT is connectivity and data, and ProSoft is there in both of those to help you with your projects. Very good, so that's the end of the okay. slides part. Um, Julianne, I think we've got some questions coming in. We do have questions coming in, uh, let's see. Bruce asks, uh, in the past, the communication overhead that is inherent in Ethernet IP made connecting PLCs using cellular networks very expensive. How have you overcome this issue? Uh, that's a fantastic question. <laughs> yes, both Ethernet IP and some of the other industrial protocols like DNP3 uh, are pretty intensive uh, because of all the features they support. Um, so uh, a couple of ways, depending on you know, one of the things with Ethernet IP is it's a wired protocol, so it's really designed for processes. And when customers connect this to the internet, they say, well, we want everything. Um, part of it is actually just customer education, talking to customers and say, what is the real data that you want? It's number one. And um, number two, with the cost of cellular data or dropping significantly, uh, you know, where you could get sort of an unlimited data plan um, for under $30 a month in most cases, um, it's no longer a concern as what it used to be. Um, and then the third solution to that is the ability to use, let's say, uh, an IIoT specific protocol like MQTT um, to connect your devices um, through to the IIoT platform. Um, so, you know, one of the first slides when I showed in the ProSoft platform was the LDM module with the MQTT connectivity um, to help you with that. Uh, and MQTT is a very low bandwidth protocol uh, designed specifically for such applications. Mm -hmm. Very good. Uh, another question we have is what is the structure for PDN? 
the structure for PDN? Yeah, sure. um, that's an interesting question. Um, fundamentally, PDN is used to connect remote sites. So if you think about, let's say, for example, um, a water system or a gas distribution system, you have a number of sites that are spread over a large geographical area. Um, typically, uh, and previously, to connect these sites, you, people generally use either lease lines, um, standard telephone lines, or RF radio. Um, now, lease lines and standard telephone lines are going away. They're super expensive to maintain. In fact, uh, telecom companies don't want to maintain them given how expensive and, in, and time uh, intensive they are and people intensive. Uh, so they're making it more expensive industry to keep those. Um, if you look at RF technology that's been used for quite some time, it served its, process, uh, its purpose, but there's really been no innovation in it. Um, it's relatively low speed, and if you look at that spectrum, especially if you're using spread spectrum, it's very crowded, there's lots of people, so it's becoming less and less reliable. Um, so where uh, PDN comes in is the ability to connect all of these remote sites using your cellular network, or if you've already got a cable slash microwave uh, connection up there, you can certainly use the wired connection, but it's a flat structure uh, where you've got direct connectivity to all of the sites. It supports peer-to-peer -peer communications uh, where all of the sites can talk to each other. Um, you know, Think of it having like a switch in the cloud and anything you connect to that switch, they'd be able to talk to each other. Okay. Um, it says, does your OPC UA gateway also do edge compute or, it, or as a data logger? That's a good one. That is a very good question. So today the OPC UA is a dedicated gateway converting field protocols to OPC UA. Uh, you would need to add the data logger module in there to do the data logging for you. Uh, and it does not have the edge computing capabilities. Uh, the LDM module would provide you with that capability. Okay. Uh, this one talks about the Linux development module. Mm -hmm. um, does a Linux development module can be installed as an embedded solution on an already existing hardware? Um, so remember that the Linux telephone module is specific to the Rockwell architecture, and it does work on both the compact logics or the control logics platform. Uh, if you've got an existing PLC system out there, uh, you can certainly add the LDM module to that existing system. Um, obviously, you'll need to look at the compatibility of the firmware and so forth, but it can be added to an existing Rockwell PLC system. Very good. Okay. Um, our gate will ask: Are gateways programmable to support Azure or other edge platforms? No, they are not. No, okay. many of our gateways are industrial field protocol translation gateways. Okay. Daniel asks: Does ProSoft have a partnership with PTC ThinWorks? Oh, I think um, it works maybe. So ProSoft and PTC are partners with um, um, Rockwell. Mm -hmm. Here's another one. Um, is it possible to normalize data coming from a set of data loggers and integrate it with cloud services? Uh, yes, so typically the data out of our data logger is a standard CSV file. Um, and like I said, when you use a REST API, well, you're gonna use the REST API format to get the data or you can get it as a CSV file um, and then have that uh, uploaded into your business enterprise system. Okay. Um, does the remote access solution require any changes to the firewalls and does it support serial and legacy protocols? Um, the serial protocols, um, so th th there are a couple of ways of, uh, of enabling your remote access solution. If you use OpenVPN, you can use serial protocols. Uh, do you need to change your firewall settings? Um, clearly, if your gateway sits before the firewall, which let's say if it's a cellular gateway, you would, then yes, you would need to ensure that your firewall would recognize that incoming connection and then have that access to the rest of your network. 
Um, on the Ethernet port, the way it works is we create a secure tunnel from the remote access point the person is initiating the, uh, the connection through to the gateway and then through to your automation platform. Um, so through the Ethernet port, we don't really care what protocol you put in. Once we create the tunnel, you'd be able to bring up your uh, software, you know, whether it's RS Logix or whether it's the, uh, the Unity platform, and then be able to access your devices as if you were sitting in right in front of them, and then you can make the changes and do whatever you need to do. Okay. Here's a question on uh, the cellular gateway, the i635HWC. Uh, if I want to monitor some of my data on web HMI, is that possible? On a web HMI. Um, so yes, the IIoT will provide you the connectivity. Uh, my apologies. The i635 will provide you the connectivity that you want um, to connect your web HMI. Um, and then once you're connected and you create that secure tunnel through, yes, you will simply be able to bring up the page um, and then look at what you're looking. So uh, we've got mobile apps. Uh, so ProSoft Connect is our platform that allows you to manage these secure remote access solutions or the persistent data network solutions. And ProSoft Connect is available as dedicated apps on both the Apple and the Android platform. Um, so the web HMI is a great example because what you can now do is from your mobile device, create the secure connection from your mobile device through to the gateway. And then once you've created that secure connection, uh, you will then be able to access your web HMI pages um, and do whatever you can. Okay. Very good. Um, earlier you'd mentioned that uh, in an IoT system, cu customers have to subscribe for data. How exactly do they do this? Um, that's a very interesting question. Um, so in order to subscribe for data, there's, there's different types. So typically if it's a dashboard, um, you could have, um, you know, give customers access to the right part of that data, where they would just bring up a browser and they've got access to the data. Uh, you could set up automatic reporting from that browser to send you an email with the data that you just want. Um, that could be a CSV, could be just one tag value, uh, could be one data point, uh, but there are a few different ways on how you could subscribe to that data. Okay. Um, we have a few long ones that maybe we could um, get to later after the end of the webinar. Um, if you have any, uh, oh, here's one. Is it possible to hook up serial Modbus RTU node directly through ProSoft Cellular Gateway module? Yes. Okay, that's good. Um, and another one we have is uh, about the connectivity that you mentioned that's important for IIoT. Um, 5G services have started in some cities. How does 5G impact IIoT connectivity? Um, that's another great question. So 5G is at its infancy. Um, it's certainly growing in popularity. Uh, the advantages of 5G should be the increased bandwidth um, and also for uh, increased security. But from an industrial perspective, remember industry is always sort of one gen away. Um, so I think 4G will be around for a very long time. Um, and we're talking at least another decade. So I think it's going to take some time for industry to adopt, but if anything, um, as that adoption grows, uh, it should really help solidify the benefits of IIoT for industry. All right. There's a question coming in. Uh, it says, okay, we are participating in a few IIoT cellular devices. Um, so this is a very specific question on specifications for our uh, cellular device. Um, I can, if you can please uh, send me an email either through your local um, uh, regional sales manager um, or I think when we send you the slides, my email information is on that, uh, then we can get
get back to you on the actual specifications for our cellular modem. And most of that information is available on our website as well. Um, in terms of additional charges for cloud services, um, so it really does depend. So there is a, subs a subscription model. Um, so for example, for secure remote access, um, if you need more VPN data, then there is a subscription service, but every data or every gateway uh, comes with one gig of VPN data per month per gateway. So if you've got 10 gateways, each one of those 10 gateways does have access to one gig of VPN data for every calendar month. Uh, if you need more, then there is a charge. And uh, the PDN is a subscription service because remember that's a secure uh, connection that we maintain between all of your remote sites so you can exchange data for communications and back to the control system and so forth. So we've got to maintain that secure tunnel. Um, so, and again, there's a cost to that and then it's a subscription service. Okay, another one here. Uh, is it possible to hook up serial Modbus RTU node directly through ProSoft? Oh, we already did that one. ProSoft Cellular Gateway Module and Connect slash work for PDN. Maybe we didn't. Okay, so it says here, um, so Modbus serial data um, through our cellular modem is supported through a open VPN connection uh, and not through the PDN network. Uh, we would typically put a serial to ethernet gateway in front uh, to have that work through the PDN network, which is what we've done for customers. Right, okay. Okay, um, another attendee asks, ProSoft has any cellular gateway which has IO server, so it can be used as a gateway also? Which has IO server built into that? Um, no, no would be the answer. I'd, I'd like a little bit more clarification on the question. Okay, give them time to see if they'll do that. Okay, there was a question here about um, Anatel certification in Brazil. Um, go ahead, if you have an answer. Right, so our cellular gateway today is not certified for use in Brazil. Um, primarily, we were just about to get certification, but a requirement in Brazil is for IPv6. Um, so today, our gateways are not uh, supported in Brazil. Okay, very good. Are there any more questions? I'll give a little time for that one attendee to clarify. Uh, Will just came in. Uh, does the cellular gateway need your own SIM or is this, oh, SIM, or is this provided with the solution? ProSoft can, uh, if you are in, uh, uh, the USA, so uh, in the United States, uh, ProSoft can provide you with the cellular service. Uh, we've got both Verizon and AT&T. Um, it's actually one of the key issues. So our cellular devices are certified for both Verizon and AT&T, and they've also got the PTCRP certifications as well. Uh, globally, um, you know, ProSoft can, but we simply will not be competitive. So highly recommend that you would source the SIM card locally. Okay, another one. Um, you talked a little bit about using industrial fast Wi-Fi for AGVs and cranes. What is the maximum distance that it can go? That's a very good question. I don't have the answer to that on the top of my head. Um, can we please get back to you with the, with the answer to that question? Uh, Julianne, have you, yes. do you know who answers? Okay, yes, good. I have the name here, yep. Okay, good. Can the ICX35 HWC be used as an open VPN server? Uh, open VPN client. Client, okay. Okay. I will get back to this one attendee on the maximum distance. And if there are no more questions, I guess I'll close it out. This was a great webinar. Thanks for all the information, Vishal. 
Thank you, Julianne. Thank you all for attending. Again, stay safe. Thank you for all the questions. Um, and please feel free to contact either your regional sales manager or ProSoft directly uh, if you've got any additional questions regarding this webinar. Um, and I think for everybody that attended, we will make these uh, slides available in the coming days to you. Yes, absolutely. All right, thanks everybody. Thank you.